The internet has changed everything from the way we work to the way we play to the way we live. It seems that there's a corner of the internet for everyone, despite your interests or beliefs. There's someone or something out there that thinks the same way you do. The internet has connected us in ways that were never before imagined. It's a place where everyone from anywhere on earth can come together. There's so much stuff on the internet, most of which you don't even know exists. If you want something, anything, whether it be a service or product, legal or illegal, immoral or unethical, the internet has it. You can choose to use this for good or bad. Much like the surface web that we all use every single day, the dark web is full of websites, forums, and services that we can use, but it's hidden under a layer of protection. Under the surface lies the nest of dark and hidden activities that are blocked off from the rest of the world. The dark web is the haven for illegal online activity, and it goes deep, much deeper than you might imagine. It's a place where criminals, predators, spies, drug, and even human traffickers lie, and it's all hidden in plain sight. You could access it in minutes if you wanted, but should you? You can break down the internet into three separate categories. First off, we have the surface web. This is everything that you use on a daily basis. YouTube, Twitter, any social media at all. It's all a part of what we call the World Wide Web. It's relatively easy to find anything on the surface web, as almost everything is indexed by search engines like Google. Every second, over 1,000 photos are posted on Instagram, 8,000 tweets are posted on Twitter, 70,000 Google searches take place, and nearly 100,000 YouTube videos are watched. From this, the surface web seems massive, and in a way, it is. In terms of pure traffic, almost everything you do can be found here. You could look up anyone and find some kind of information about them and their life. But what you can't find are things like their bank account or medical records. These things are hidden under password-protected websites where only they can access them. This is where we venture into the deep web. The deep web refers to the content on the internet that is not indexed by search engines. Basically, if you can't find it on Google, it's technically on the deep web. If you've ever logged into your email, you've browsed the deep web, technically. And I know it might be a little disappointing that the deep web is not as cool as it sounds. It's pretty much just as mundane as the surface web, but with just a bit more secrecy. But realize that the deep web is the most massive part of the internet. The deep web contains 96% of everything there is on the internet. So even if you've gone online every single day and searched through new websites for the next 50 years, you wouldn't even put a dent into the pure amount of information there is on the internet. There's just too much to go through, most of which you couldn't even get access to. But even further, deeper than the deep web, in the tiniest sliver of the internet, lies the part of the web where things don't leave. Websites that are encrypted, their existence sliced without IP addresses to make them nearly unrecognizable. Access by users with encrypted software to completely mask their identities. Here, anything and everything goes. We've reached the dark web, but how does this even work? How can you hide from the rest of the world on something that pretty much everyone has access to? If you're browsing the surface web, chances are the FBI man is watching you. All right, not really, but for the average person. Everything you do online can, and in many ways, will be tracked. Many websites track what you're searching and looking at, and in turn, advertise products or services to you that fit that description. This isn't anything new. Facebook, Amazon, and most social media sites are guilty of this. They sell your data to advertisers around the world, and you agreed to it in those terms and conditions that you didn't read. This isn't a coincidence, and this doesn't happen by accident. The internet wasn't made to be anonymous. Some people see this as an invasion of privacy. Others don't see a problem with it at all. But how far can we let this go before it turns bad?